If you have plans to be attacked by a bear, a shark, or anything else, make sure you watch this first. I'm Loretta from New Jersey. Let's talk about that. This episode is brought to you by the all-new RetinLink.com. That's our website. Completely redesigned for your viewing and interactive pleasure. Please check it out and comment over there. Where is that at? RetinLink.com. That's a good website name. Now, Land Rover is a famous uh, brand of vehicles, Link. You know about Land yeah. Rover? They have a redesigned website, well, LandRover.com. No. Lots of people uh, recognize Land Rover as like, the perfect car for a survivalist. However, I kind of see it as the perfect car for a woman with a lot of plastic surgery in Los Angeles because that's who I see yes. driving I've, Land Rovers. I've seen lots of this. It's good for getting into steep driveways in the Hollywood Hills. That's what uh, <laughs> Land Rovers are good for. But apparently they have a reputation for being the perfect vehicle for a survivalist. Somebody who's just gonna go get into some mess somewhere. And in the United Arab Emirates, which is a country in the Middle East. Yes, it is. The Land Rover customers now, with every Land Rover, they get, according to a late news story, they get a survival guide on how to survive certain <laughs> situations that also has edible pages. What? It has edible pages in the survival guide, and they have as many calories as a cheeseburger. <laughs> so, you, so you can eat... You just got an alert on your iPad to pay Don't. a credit card. Yeah, two of them actually. I'm glad. Make sure you do that. I will. That's, That's why key. there's an alert. A key for our survival is that you pay our corporate credit card. But so it's like a manual for how to fix the Land Rover, but it's how to fix your life if you're in a situation where you need to survive. And part of the fixing of your life when you're in that situation is eating the manual itself. Well, I think surviving and fixing your life are kind of the same thing. Staying, yeah. uh, staying alive. Yeah, I, I use that those terms interchangeably. But as I was... Only certain pages are editable? Like, do, editable, like do, no, edible. Do not eat this page, do not eat this page, and then all of a sudden, eat this page. All the pages are edit, and then if you're editable really hungry. with whiteout. You can edit all the pages, but you can only <laughs> ed a few of the pages. <laughs> okay. But as I was looking at this edible... I gotta be pretty in a dire situation if I'm gonna eat a manual. Well, it's I don't edible. Care, I don't it care if it flavor. says edible on it. It has flavor. We should call Land Rover and see if we can get hold of some of these. We'll do that later. Uh, but it made me think, how prepared am I? Do I need a guide like this? How prepared am I? And so I actually went to a few websites. One of them was Discovery Channel. Discovery Channel has all kinds of information about surviving in all these different places. So I'm gonna read out some situations that you might find yourself in. Okay. And I want you to tell me what you would do, and then I'm gonna tell you what you should actually do. Now I'm glad you're asking me this, because as many of you know, I survived high school without getting beat up and I, I talked a lot of trash. So I, I like to consider myself a survivalist of sorts anyway. Not related, I'm, not, I'm talking about that kind of thing. A total editable survivalist, now, that's me. Everybody knows one of the first things that you should do when you find yourself lost and you're gonna have to spend the night in a hostile environment outside is you need to build a shelter. Mm -hmm. Now Link, what is the most common mistake made in building a temporary shelter? Digging a hole. Because if it rains, you drown. <laughs> no, that's not true. It's actually making it too small, too large. People make them too large, especially when you're in a cold climate. The hole? No, the shelter. The shelter needs to be tight and it needs to be around you so it will trap your body heat. Well, that's, you called, need, that's called a sleeping bag. No, no, it's a, but you need to be able to get around and do things in there, like make little fires and cook and catch things and bring them in yeah, there. Yes, so you need to make it big. No, just big enough to build a fire in it? To, well, you might want to build don't a fire. Don't make it too big because... Body heat. Body heat. Now, what's the first thing you and should... And don't dig a hole because you'll drown in it. That's not true. Actually, in the desert, you should dig a hole and then cover it Well, it doesn't it up. rain in the desert, but if it does, it's a flash flood. And guess what, buddy? You'll drown there. I think you'll have time to get out. What's the first thing you do, speaking of water, when your car lands in water? What's the first thing you should do? Uh, roll your windows up. Well, the second thing. First thing to do, hold your breath. Uh, the f first thing you should do is you should unfasten your seatbelt. And then hold your breath. Nope. You should unfasten your seatbelt because you would not believe how many people could have gotten out of a, of a car that was sinking and then were Woo! like buckled up. This is, this is creeping me out, man. So as soon as you hit the water, unbuckle your seatbelt and then the next thing you should do before the car shorts out is you should roll your windows down. 
Are you, are you, were you just uh, joking? Wait, so you can become a ballast? You'll sink to the bottom. You're filled with. You're you going to no sink air. to the bottom regardless. But <laughs> You'll what sink you're a lot faster. No, what happens is if you leave the windows up, you sink, and then the pressure, the external pressure, is so great on the outside of the car that you, there, no human, the Hulk, couldn't even get out of the car or break a window because. The oh. pressure is so high. So you so roll, roll down the windows. Down so you, can, you have an escape hatch. And then you get out. Because now, the door won't open with the pressure Oh, either. you can't open the door. Forget opening the door. I However, have a sick feeling even thinking about this happening. Well, th that's the thing. I'm going to break this to you now. Right after this episode, I'm going to go drive a car with you in it into the L.A. River. And you have to put all this into practice. Well, I will... you'll just hit concrete because there's no water in it. <laughs> yeah, it'll be like just driving in a big ditch. So roll your windows down. And then if you happen to not roll your windows down, you cannot kick the window out. It is impossible to kick the window out. You have to take a sharp object and bust one of your side windows. Not the back window, not the windshield because those are thicker. Bust a side window. With a sharp object with, or a blunt object? Like a flashlight, anything hard that can kind of break the glass. And go for the corner, okay? You're going to live because of this stuff. You can do it. You can live. I'll now, be there with you. Now, if you happen to find yourself in the middle of a field during a thunderstorm with lightning, and I'm talking a big field, you cannot get out of the field, okay? Like, we're talking an endless field, say the desert. The desert is not a field. Well, let's say it's a desert. It's raining, and you you built your hole. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not drowning in your hole. You haven't built your hole yet. All right, thunderstorm comes up. I'm in a, and I'm in an expanse. What do you do? There's no shelter What around. position should you get in? Let's, I'm going to um, make it a little bit easier for you. Jump up and down repeatedly until the storm passes because that drastically increases your chances of being in the air when it strikes and then it won't strike you. That's a good idea. That's a horrible idea. If you have a rope, you can jump that. Uh, if not, simulate jumping rope. Whatever you do, do not lie flat on the ground. That is the worst thing that you could do because it's gonna create a huge contact between you and the ground and you're, all the lightning is just gonna hit and go through all your your entire body. You should get- But not, you won't you be should, tall. You should crouch down on the balls of your feet with your feet together to minimize your contact with the ground and put your hands over your ears to protect yourself from acoustic shock. So you get down like that. He's, he's down on the balls of his feet with his hands over his ears. That's the his light, ears, that's the thunderstorm have. position. Okay, give me another one. I, I think I'm doing pretty well. I could write an alternate Survival guide to all of this stuff. You've missed all of them so far. How do most people survive? I mean, how do most people die in quicksand? Um, they roll their windows down. They're in a car, right? Do you know that it is impossible for a person to become completely submerged in quicksand? quicksand? That is a movie myth. myth. You, at, yes. most, at most, you can sink to just above your waist. Now, if you're alone and you sink to just above your waist, you're going to die. So... Everyone who dies in quicksand dies of dehydration and or starvation. Ooh. It isn't from getting sucked up in the sand. And so the way to prevent that, when you find yourself in quicksand, because I know this is going to happen to you, you lean back as you're going, as you're falling, you lean back and then you move your feet in circular motions, just like you're brushing your teeth, you know, circular. I don't brush my teeth with my feet. And your feet will slowly rise to the top and then you'll be laying on there and you can roll over. Be back floating. Okay, now we're going to talk about animals because animals attack. Uh, let's say you're floating in the ocean with some compa companions after your boat sinks. What are some ways to avoid being attacked by sharks? P. Urinating is one of the worst things that you could do. If you must, only do so in small amounts. Let it dissipate between discharges, you know? Or if you're dehydrated, whoop, whoop, whoop. go right into your mouth. And if you must defecate, <laughs> if you must defecate, do so in small amounts and throw it as far away from you as possible. I'd do that anyway, in all circumstances. I'm like a chimpanzee. Like a, like a monkey throwing his... <laughs> okay. Now... Other than rainwater and condensation, what is a fresh water source while lost at sea? You're in a raft, you're at, at sea, you're dying of thirst, can't drink the water in the ocean, everybody knows that. What can you do? Where else can you get water? And it's not your own piece, and I'll say that. You're not supposed to drink your urine. That's a trick question. I can't come up with any other. Drink the aqueous fluid found along the spine and the eyes of large fish. Carefully cut the fish in half to get the fluid along the spine and suck the eye. If you are so short of water that you need to do this, then do not drink any of the other body fluids. These <sighs> fluids are rich in protein and fat and will use up more of your reserve water and digestion than they supply. Okay, now we're gonna talk about a few animals that you might get attacked by. What do you do if you're being attacked by a hungry monkey? 
um, throw his feces back at him. You could do that, but you can also do the open mouth threat. Make an O with your mouth and lean forward and raise your eyebrows. Monkeys will be scared out of their minds. Do I have to make a noise? That's what I would do. I would make a monkey sound back at him. Sound like crow. And now, uh, crocodiles and alligators. What's, how do you, what, what do you do in your when zigzag you, pattern? That is false. Forget the zigzag thing. That that that's a myth. They say that in that in that survival book, but at Discovery Channel, they say. Well, actually, I think this is somewhere else. We'll put the source up. They say forget anything you've heard about zigzagging. Just leg it. Just run. They cannot run that fast. They can run pretty fast, but just go. Just get away as fast as you can. And if they do happen to get hold of you, try to stick your thumb into its eye. Oh. Just go for the eyeballs. And then if you're really thirsty, you can drink the eyeball once you kill it. And lastly, this is the most interesting one as far as I'm concerned. I already know the answer to Bear it. attacks. What, okay, so I'm gonna talk about three different types of bears. What do you do if you're being attacked by a grizzly, grizzly bear? Grizzly bear, uh, take your shirt off, hold it above your head to make yourself look like a huge being. That is incorrect. When you're being attacked by a grizzly bear, first thing you should do, if he's making aggressive moves, you should just stand straight up and back away very slowly. Do not panic, back away very slowly. But if he attacks you anyway, you play dead. Grizzly bear, you play dead. You don't fight back at all, you play dead. Like just go limp and yeah, eyes roll just back in. Ragdoll. What do you do if you're being attacked by a black bear? Call the grizzly bear. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. You fight back. With grizzly, with, with black bears, first of all, pump. You want to get you want some of this? You want to get Black big bear? and crazy. You want to get as big and make as many crazy noises as you can. Hold on. That's your that's what your characterization of fighting back. No, no, no. I'm not you fighting like a yet. crazy moment. I'm not fighting. He's just about to attack me. And then he's then he'll be intimidated. And then if he begins to attack you, just go crazy on him. Just fight him back with everything you got. And lastly, oh, you got another one? What do you do if you're being attacked by a polar bear? Just speak gently. Hey, man, be cool. Be cool, daddy-o. No, you give him a Coca-Cola. That's a joke. I'm spinning the wheel. Don't, <laughs> don't take the last Actually, you like die. Like Lamont. You That's die. There's really nothing you can do. There is a video on YouTube of a guy scaring off a polar bear with a stick, but typically, once it starts, it's over, buddy. You're dead. Speaking of which, Rhett shrinks and Link grows. That's how we're ending this episode. Good Mythical Morning. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, what's this on the table? It says, eat me, and yours oh. says, drink me. Do I grow or do I get? You grow. Okay. Mm. Mm. Oh, Link, mm. you're getting so big. Mm. I'm gonna have to Whoa, get away. look at how tall I am. I'm gonna have to move away to make a first perspective. Oh, I'm gonna Good so gracious. Small. I'm so oh, tall. Look how small I am. You can hold me in your hand. I'm like a little... I can little see everything here. from up here. Oh, look how small I am. Thanks for calling, Land Rover. You know, this is Tony. Yeah, Tony, I'm wondering if you guys have any of those edible survival guides? Edible survival guides? Yeah, they come in the Land Rovers now. 